Glass is one of the most popular and versatile building materials used today, but that versatility comes with some limitations. One is how well glass can resist the loads created by wind and snow. The impact of wind and snow on a building can be significant, which is why the design requirements must be followed carefully. We'll cover the scope and assumptions of the ASTM standard E1300 for wind and snow loads, the concepts that drive the wind and snow load calculations, and the basic design procedures to calculate a result. First, we'll briefly describe four relevant procedures addressed by the ASTM E1300 standard. One. ASTM E1300 includes procedures that address monolithic, laminated, and insulated glass constructions made with annealed or heat-treated glass. IGUs can have various glass makeups, and each configuration can include different combinations of monolithic glass lights and laminated glass lights. 2. The number of glass edges supported. Typically, all four sides are supported in a framed window or a four-sided structural silicone glazing. However, some applications can be two-sided support, such as butt joint glazing or sometimes even three-sided or one-sided supports. 3. Short and long duration uniform loads. A wind gust against a building facade is the most common example of a short duration load, while snow on top of a skylight is an example of a long duration load. 4. Calculating center of glass deflection, as excessive glass deflection can result in edge pullout or may cause concern to the building's occupants when they see glass movement greater than three quarters of an inch. These procedures operate under some basic assumptions related to glass fabrication and installation, including the glass has been properly glazed without any edge damage. The glass hasn't been subjected to any abuse. The surface condition of the glass doesn't have any significant damage. The framing design limits the lateral deflection of the edges to less than 1 175th of their length, and the center of the glass deflection will not result in loss of edge support. There are five key concepts that impact the wind and snow load calculations on a project. First is the glass type factor, which is the multiplying factor for adjusting the load resistance of different glass types. Second is the specified design load, which is the magnitude in kilopascals or pounds per square foot of the type and duration of the load that is specified by the building code. A wind velocity in miles per hour can easily be converted to pounds per square foot by a simple formula. Third is the relative strength of the glass for a given thickness, width, height, and number of supported edges. Fourth is the load share factor, which is the multiplying factor derived from the load sharing between two lights of equal or different types or thicknesses. Fifth is the resulting load resistance, which is the uniform load that a glass construction can sustain without breaking. Now that we've covered the assumptions and what drives the calculations, we'll go through the basic design procedure you should follow. Step 1. Start with the glass dimensions and the specified design loading. Remember that the design load needs to be pounds per square foot or kilopascals. Step 2. Think about the glass thicknesses and types you'd like to use and formulate a trial design. Step 3. Use ASTM E1300 to determine the load resistance and center of glass deflection. If the load resistance is greater than the specified design loading, then your trial design is fine and you can proceed. If the load resistance is less than the specified design loading, then the trial design needs to be modified and retested. Now that you know how these complex calculations work, you'll be happy to know that any Vitro certified fabricator can do these calculations for you. Visit vitroglazings.com to find a certified fabricator near you. For more information about wind and snow loads, or to ask any glass question, please visit vitroglazings.com or call 855-VTROGLS. 855-887-6457